Southeastern Conference, the Securities and Exchange Commission, okay? This is to regulate the stock market, okay? So the stock market went boom, right? And then it went bust, all right? So we needed some regulation in here. So Securities and Exchange Commission, which is still around today, a lot of these programs are still around today. Say about half that we'll talk about are still around, okay? They regulate the stock market and prevent abuses. Stock markets include New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, Standard & Poor's, Chicago Mercantile. Okay, so if you're, if you're trading cattle, hogs, that sort of thing, wheat, corn, Chicago Mercantile, okay? Those are commodities, okay? physical commodities, okay? Now they're giving, they license these. So like, we can't just like start our own stock exchange. We gotta be licensed by the SEC, okay? If you sell stock publicly, if you sell stock publicly, you have to give information about your business to the SEC. You can't just make up, this is how much money we made this year. And people are like, wow, I'm gonna buy stock in your company. You have to show them the books. What are your assets? What are your liabilities? Okay. What are your profits? These sorts of things. Okay. They regulate the activities of, of investment advisors. So, guys, you can't just open a store on North Ridge Road, Stocks or Us, and start being a stockbroker. You got to take a test. You got to take some classes. You got to be licensed. It's like a doctor or a teacher. You got to be licensed. If you want to sell real estate, you can't sell real estate unless you're licensed, okay? So these investment advisors have rules that they have to follow. This is why I like using like big firms like Edward Jones. Like my guy, Mark Sloan out east, there's like 30 Edward Joneses in Wichita. My guy can't just take my money and run. There's regulations he has to follow, the way he has to treat his customers, okay? Information he has to provide, and he has to be licensed, okay? And those that break the rules can be prosecuted by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Kind of like uh, you've probably heard of Martha Stewart. You guys know Martha Stewart? Martha Stewart? She's like the homemaker lady. She did a cooking show with Snoop Dogg. Did you guys see that? Oh, it's fabulous. I mean, you got this, this old white lady, okay, who's like, she does crafts and stuff, and, and Snoop Dogg, okay? Odd couples, okay? Odd couples make for interesting things, okay? So anyhow, um, she went to prison. She's a famous person. Why did she go to prison? Insider trading. She owned 19,000 shares of this company called Inclone. Okay. Her investment advisor got a tip from somebody that worked at Inclone. That's they were about to get some bad news. Now the public doesn't have access to that information. This person shared it, and then her advisor called Martha Stewart and said, hey, got a tip. This company you own stock in is about to get bad news. Do you want to sell? She said, yeah, sell it. She sold 19,000 shares. Two days later, the bad news came out. Well, the SEC looks for big trades, buys and sells, before good news or bad news comes out about a company. So say you worked at Boeing, and you were tipped off, you found out that China Airlines was going to buy 30 737s. Tell your family about it. They buy a bunch of Boeing stock because the price is about to go up. The value is about to go up. Well, and the SEC sees you, you invested $100,000 in Boeing two days before they released this information. They're going to open an investigation. And when they open your investigation, they're going to track your emails and phone calls and see who you talk to. Okay. It's illegal to use that information until it's public. 
she got busted. She went to prison. Okay? Now, it's a white-collar prison. White-collar crime. I had a dude that used to coach my son's baseball team. I knew he was kind of a shady. You know, he's a talker. He's a talker, right? He's an investment advisor. He stole a million dollars from his father. He got five years in a North Dakota white-collar prison with no walls. You're just not allowed to leave. Now, if you leave, you're going to go to the other prison. You understand. So that keeps the white-collar people there. It's nonviolent crimes and stuff like that. Yeah. Financial crimes. Now, the biggest crime of all was, you guys heard Bernie Madoff? Bernie Madoff, guys. He was the investor stars. Like, famous people would give him millions of dollars to invest. And he would print fake like returns, like how much money you're making on the money you invested with me. And so other people would say, hey, dude, you got to invest your money with Bernie Madoff. Okay. What he was doing is he was taking the money people were giving him and living this incredibly lavish lifestyle and not investing the money at all. People lost hundreds of millions of dollars. He went to prison and then he died in prison shortly thereafter. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what the SCDs, and we talked about margin loans, okay? Remember, you could borrow, like, put down 20%, borrow 80%. They still have margin loans, okay? But the Federal Reserve regulates that. It says, okay, you can borrow 20%, but you got to put down 80%. So you can still do that sort of thing, but it's regulated, so it doesn't get out of hand. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, okay? What time do we get out today? What? 20. 20? Okay. All right, we're fine. Okay, we good on this? Okay. Now, Roosevelt wanted to balance the budget. Now, Remember the other day when I put up the uh, national debt? Yeah. So in order to balance the budget, you either got to cut spending, okay, or increase revenue. Yes? Or a combination. So Roosevelt wanted to balance the budget by cutting government spending. Look where he wanted to cut spending. He wanted to cut government workers' wages. And veterans' pensions. Now, this isn't going to be popular, is it? Is it going to pass? I don't think it's going to pass. So, guys, a bill is proposed legislation. If it passes both houses of Congress and is signed by the president, it becomes a law. Okay? No, we haven't had government yet. Okay, so this is the economy, the balanced budget bill. It's going to cut wages and veterans' pensions. Vets. Okay. Now this is unpopular, but there's a trick you can play in Congress. Okay, you can add things to this bill. Okay, they're called amendments to the bill. Or earmarks. Earmarks. Amendments. The bill. How many of you guys have been in the Kansas Conference today? Who goes? You been in the Kansas Conference sphere? Huh? <laughs> What's your last name? Lee? Right here. Lee. <laughs> Huerta. 
Been to Kansas College before? Lee. You haven't been? Do you know what it is? Mikey. Shut up. Mikey. Yes, and hush. You been there? You been there? Rodriguez. Ever take a field trip to middle school? You didn't get to go on a field trip? <laughs> what is the Cosmosphere? It's a space museum. Why in the world did they put a space museum in Nowheresville, Kansas? I mean, wouldn't you put it in Houston, where NASA is, or Cape Canaveral, Florida, where they launched the rockets? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they have some of the rarest space artifacts in the world. Like the Apollo 13 capsule is in a hutch case. Why? I got two words for it. Bob Dole. You ever heard of Bob Dole? Bob Dole? It's two words, Bob and Dole. You never heard of Bob Dole? Bob Dole was one of the most famous Kansans. He's a World War II veteran that served in the United States Senate, ran for president against Bill Clinton in 1996. Bob Dole. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Dole was the Senate majority leader in the 80s. There's 100 senators, right? Two from each state. One of our senators from Kansas was the leader of the Senate. And the leader of the Senate, Bob Dole, <laughs> there was a bill going through the Senate, not unlike this. <laughs> and he put in an earmark, an attachment, for $3.5 million. This is the 80s. It's a lot of money. Okay? To build a cosmosphere in Hutchison, Kansas. It had nothing to do with the bill. You understand? But he added it to the bill with an amendment or an earmark. Okay? That bill got passed. Now, this is what that means. is That means that the taxpayers of California, Florida, Rhode Island, Wyoming, Iowa, paid for our Cosmosphere in Hutchinson, Kansas. Now, if Kansas wants... A Cosmosphere, shouldn't Kansans pay for it? No, let's make everybody else pay for our little museum that's off the, it's not even on I-70. Like, you got to want to go to Hutchison if you're a tourist. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to go see the largest ball of twine in the world. Well, it's right off the freaking highway, right? So what Roosevelt does is something really smart here. This is an unpopular bill. So he's going to make it popular. Not that our space museum made that bill popular, but he was a powerful senator. Okay? So don't write down these notes yet. See this? This is what I just drew on the board. Yes? Okay? Okay? Here's your economy budget bill. Going to cut wages and pensions. They're going to legalize beer and wine. No liquor, no whiskey, no vodka, no gin, just beer and wine. They're going to add this to the bill. Now, this is not the 21st Amendment, guys. This is a law, right? A bill, a law. The Constitution says, under the 18th Amendment, the manufacture, sale, consumption, and transportation of alcoholic beverages is against the law. So is this law right here constitutional? No. This is the second time in four slides that I've put something up here that was unconstitutional. Did people care? No. 
because they wanted their beer and they wanted their beer now. They didn't want to wait for the 21st Amendment to be ratified by 34 states. That takes time. That process takes time. So the ballot budget bill, cut wages and pensions, passes because they added this to it. Can you explain that to me on the table? I'm not going to make you explain the inflation and deflation thing and going off the gold standard, okay? But I may ask you to write about this. Yes. Bob Dole. Bob Dole. When we get to history, we'll talk a lot about Bob Dole. We're in history. Later in history, we'll talk about more Bob. When we get to World War II, guys. He was badly wounded. World War II. Yes. How so? A mortar went off next to him. Basically, shoot up the whole right side of his body. He was in the hospital for six months. Lost the use of his right hand. He's like 98. He's not well. I can tell you that. He's not well. If he's still alive. I think he's still alive. I don't know. Anyways. Series. Bob Dole still alive? No. He passed December 21. Yeah. Is that what like Rube Dole frame? He has nothing to do with it. It's spelled the same though. He's a Kansan. He's from Russell, Kansas. You guys know where Russell, Kansas is? near Hayes. So if you ever drive to Colorado, you'll pass Russell Kansas, and they'll have a sign out there with Bob Dole's name on it, along with Arlen Specter, who was also born in Russell, Kansas, who was also a United States senator from Pennsylvania, but he was born in Kansas. Two senators born in that small Kansas town. Crazy. And I got an even crazier story to go along with it when we get to it. No. Yes. Did they make the brand Russell? No. But I know what you're talking about. Russell makes a good uniform. I like them. Their baseball pants are good. They last a long time. Okay. So, guys, the amendment. The 21st Amendment, which repeals the 18th prohibition, has to be proposed by Congress and then ratified by three quarters of the states. Hawaii and Alaska were not states yet, so that's 34 states. Today we have 50 states to ratify a constitutional amendment. We need 38 states. Guys, we have 27 amendments to the Constitution. First 10 are the Bill of Rights. They were all ratified in 1791. So over 230 years, we've only had 17 constitutional amendments okay, that have been ratified. So now you know the 18th, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21st. You know four. You're welcome. Okay. So this is not the 21st Amendment. Right? It's an earmark. It's an amendment to the bill. If I'm going to amend the test, it means I'm going to change the test. Constitutional amendment changed the Constitution. The law of the land. Okay, good? Yeah, how much time I got? Five minutes? Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one shortly. Okay. The C, C, C. The Civilian Conservation Court. Core. Core. Like Marine Corps. Peace Corps. The Army Corps of Engineers. The P and the S are silent. Okay? On the test. 
If you write CO period, it's wrong. You write CORP period, it's wrong. You gotta write core, the way it's supposed to be spelled. Which means, what kind of question is that gonna be on the test? It could be a long answer, or it could be a fill in the blank. Yes, ma'am. Core is like a, it's like a group. It's like a regiment, a group, like a platoon or a group of people. Okay. This group of people, I don't, I'm not going to get into this too much. Okay? This group of people is going to be young men between the ages of 18 and 25. Guys, unemployment during the Depression for 18 to 25-year-old men was extremely high. So you got a bunch of poor 18 to 25-year-olds with nothing to do. That's not a good recipe. So we're going to get them off the streets. We're going to send them out into the wilderness. And when I say wilderness, I'm talking Wyoming, Montana wilderness. Okay? And they're going to help build fire land buildings, trails in our national parks. Have any of you guys been to any of our national parks? All right, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yellowstone's awesome. How old were you? Nice. Great tea time? Yeah. Yellowstone? Y'all been to Colorado Rocky Mountain National Park? What about the Grand Canyon? What about Glacier National Park? Been there? What about Yosemite? In California. Badlands. So you guys got like the Griswolds. Like. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Guys, our national parks are amazing. Okay. You need to take advantage of them. Okay, now Yellowstone is great, but so many people go there. Okay, so if we look at a map of the United States, Yellowstone is in the northwest corner of, of Wyoming. Okay, that's a long drive from here, but it's doable. I drove to Wyoming this summer. Okay, yeah. I made it from Black Hills, Sundance here. Wichita in 12 hours. So to, to Yellowstone, it's another probably five. So it's about 17 hours. But it's, guys, this is a beautiful state. Guys, just driving through Wyoming is amazing. Okay, now Montana, they call Big Sky. Big Sky. And we kind of have that in Wichita, guys. We have Big Sky. Okay, we don't have a lot of trees. We don't have a lot of obstructions to our view. Like the sunsets in Kansas are gorgeous. You can see them. You know what I mean? Listen, you guys know, you all know I-70, right? Okay, I-70 runs across it. You start going east on I-70. And before you, know, you get into Missouri, and there's going to be trees on the side of the road. You can't see claustrophobic, man. Okay, now if you go west on I-70, it's open, especially western Kansas, right? Now you go up to I-80 and I-90, it's wide open, okay? Did you know this? Roads that go east and west are even numbers, north and south are odd numbers. Yeah, so I-10 down here, okay? And it's pine trees, especially in Florida. Pine trees. You can't see anything. Like, what's on the other side of those trees? You have no idea. In Kansas, you know it's open. You know what I mean? Nice. I miss, like, I go east a lot. Now I drive to go see my daughter and stuff. It's like, and there's so much traffic. You know? Wide open. And the speed limit in Wyoming is 80. 
Yeah. Glacier National Park is way up here, guys. Not many people, not as many people go there. When you go to when you go to Yellowstone, hundred out of thousand people are gonna show up too. It's packed. Yeah. My wife and I camp in Glacier. It is cold. It, like we were there in July and you needed sweatshirts and so forth. It's beautiful. Okay. Now, Yosemite in California, you can imagine with the population of California, it is crowded. The, the national parks have gotten so crowded, like even Rocky Mountain National, you've got to set an appointment to go. Okay. Now, there's a rule that a lot of people don't know. If you get there before 6 a.m., or I think, I think 6 a.m., you don't need a pass. Okay. That's when the wildlife is active. At the early morning hours, as the sun started to come up, that's when you see the moose, the deer, all that stuff. Okay, so we've got the Colorado Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a beautiful guy. Okay, uh, but Glacier, you want to get away from it all? Go to Wyoming. Go to Montana. Okay, now parts of Montana are blowing up right now. Like people are leaving California and they're going to they're going to Montana. So cost of living in a lot of these places, the housing shortage. Okay, talk more about CCC tomorrow.